I'm Jason, otherwise known as Stimpy JD. I know I haven't posted on here in a while, and I'm gonna try to do better at that by putting some more videos up here and there. But I thought I would take the time to make a video um, about Boston. I know it's been one year since the tragic bombings at the Boston Marathon of 2013. Um, this year I actually got to race in Boston, which was a huge privilege, and I'm so glad I did it. Um, some of the highlights from the trip, um, going to the expo, getting to meet um, Mr. Hoyt, who pushes his son across the finish line at the marathon every year, and this year was his last marathon, so it was an honor just to meet him. Um, I got to run the 5K Saturday morning, and that was my first kind of glimpse into what I was to expect for the entire weekend, and it was mind-blowing. Probably one of the best experiences I've ever had. It was a little emotional going through the finish line at Boylston Avenue. Um, one of the cool features, as you probably heard already, they had the old Revolutionary War uh, Fife, Drum and Fife, which was really cool. They also got to do a nice little pre-race ceremony for some of the runners there which I thought was awesome. So one of the really cool things they did was they were giving out scarves at uh, the old church on Boylston Avenue just down the finish line and they were giving away these scarves to all the runners and it's from a thing called the, Marath the Marathon Scarf Project 2014 which is the year of remembrance and hope and this was the scarf I received at um, the old South Church in Boston. So this was really cool. The cool thing about my scarf, mine actually came with a note as well, which I will read right now. Dear Boston participant, may this scarf be a small token of friendship and love. May it be a small gift of blessings and hope as you give up your time to run this grueling race. It is my prayer that blessings of faith, love, and hope will abound within. My thoughts and prayers were with all the families past and present of the people, participants, that were and are at the Boston Marathon race. May God really bless each and every one of you in his own special way. Uh, and this actually came from a lady from Belding, Michigan, uh, Cher Greening. So, Miss Greening, if you're watching this, thank you very much for the card and for the scarf. It means a lot and it's greatly appreciated. I'm kind of a bit of a sock fiend, so I decided to, of course, pick up some socks in Boston. And one of the socks that I'll show you are these cool Boston Strong socks. One side it says Boston, other side it says Strong, and these are actually running socks too, so these were really comfortable. That was a good buy. Oh, at the expo, one of the things I got was the Boston Strong shirt that you see over there. And all participants of any Boston race got this cool um, marathon shirt. I don't know if you can see this, but it says, Boston runs as one. I thought that was a really cool thing to have. This is really just exclusive to the runners. and. It was really cool just getting to get one of these in Boston. So that was really something. Sorry guys, it's right at the end of this game. I'm watching the Habs and Bruins game one. Oh! Jeez. These guys just don't know how to quit. These, these ruins, man, they... I'll get to that in a second. This, is, this has been a fun NHL playoffs. Probably one of the best in a while that I've seen. I don't know if I should have the 5K side on, or if I should have the Boston Runs as one side on. I don't know. I think I'll do the Runs as one side. Looks a little better. So, after going to Boston Common, my family and I went to the Red Sox 
Orioles game that Saturday, and it was also photo day at Fenway Park. <laughs> You're probably wondering why I said Fenway Park. Um, when I was in Boston two months ago, I went on the Fenway Park tour, and the guy I had was really heavy on the Boston accent, and he said we had to pronounce it Fenway Park and the Green Monster. Not monster, the Green Monster. I'll probably have, I'll have to put this clip up right now. Now in 1912, when we, when we talk about Fenway Park, I always talk about Fenway in three sections. 1912 was a field, relatively unchanged. Get into the grandstand era, 1933. Then they go up on top is 2003. So those are the, kind of the three parts of Fenway Park. 1912, same fields you're looking at right now. And left field is a hill. Anyone know why there was a hill in left field? Any idea? As you can see, he clearly has a bit of an accent. Um, I actually got the hat during the tour two months ago because I knew I would be coming to photo day at Fenway Park. So when I got it onto the field, and I do this with all my ball caps, if I'm able to go on the field, I pick up a little bit of dirt, or in this case, a bit of dirt, and I put some, I rub it up and I put some under the bill, and I also put some inside the little crevice right here. That way it could be an actual authentic hat from the actual stadium. So it's pretty cool. As I'm showing pictures, I thought I'd mention this, but my family and I got to meet the founder of 47 Brand, Arthur D'Angelo, who gets to sit in his glove chair. Um, he greets the fans every home game at Fenway Park, and he lets you try on his championship ring if you're really nice. And I got to do that, and that was really awesome to get to wear a World Series ring from Boston. It's pretty cool. Uh, the game itself was a really good game. Saw a big poppy home run just by pesky pole. Um, getting to go on the field and getting to look up at the green monster was kind of overwhelming. I mean, the wall really is that high. So here are a couple of the highlights from the game. I think I got um, Sweet Caroline in there, which is really awesome in person. And I also got the last out of the game, so here's a couple of the highlights, right here. Oh no, we, we need you to take our picture. Uh, okay, there you go. When he comes.
I'll show you one of my pickups that I got. So they have a memorabilia store there, which sell game used jerseys. Unfortunately, about 90% of them are about two or three sizes too big for me. Um, they had a couple that were my size, but they were the green St. Patrick's Day jerseys, which I didn't like too much, because I'm not really much of a green person, to be honest. So, I thought, hey, this jersey looks pretty cool, it's about my size. Um, it's authentic, so I thought I would show it right here. This is a Boston Red Sox um, game-issued jersey, and you can see it's got the tag right here. It's got the authentic tag, and I'll show the close-ups of it. But it's got nice double stitching right here. Um, really thick material right here. It's got the nice stitching right here. On the back, uh, this was the number they had. They all have numbers, different numbers on them, or names on them. Um, the green ones were okay. They actually had a green one that had my birth year on it, but it was also a size 54 or something. So it was a little big. So this one has um, the number 95 on the back. Um, number doesn't really have too much significance, but I thought it looked really cool nonetheless. So as you can see, it's got the nice shiny numbers on it. it has the double stitching with the exact font. And also this really cool feature, that was kind of one of the reasons I got it. Um, it has the special Fenway Park 100 Years Patch logo on it. So I thought this was a really cool find to see a jersey that has this. Here's the best part, only $75. The reason it was that cheap is because it wasn't a player jersey. So I thought for 75 bucks to get an authentic with the Fenway Park 100 Years logo on it, that's a really good deal. Um, this right here is going to be a size 46, which will fit perfectly for me. I normally wear medium to large. So 46, slightly large, I'll take it. 